hello. Uh, this is my first presentation in English, so please be gentle to me. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, this talk is going to be a bit technical, and the, all the, the slides are very packed with information, so I have a pointer to guide your, your reading. And usually, I, I used to uh, people to interrupt my presentation with questions in real time. Uh, that's not the procedure here, so I, I don't know how it's going to develop the, the thing, but let's hope that I explain the um, the not obvious uh, stuff I am doing. Okay. The, this is the overview of the talk. I am going to talk about D-Trace. D-Trace is a framework developed by Sun Microsystem in 2005, 10 years ago. Uh, they need a tool to help them to develop the Solaris operating system in a more evolved way that we used to debug programs so far, okay? We used to do the famous uh, print inside the code or breakpoints, but that's something you have to insert in your code and recompile all the system to try, okay? D-Trace is very different. D-Trace is a framework where you define a lot of probes inside your code and you enable them selectively when you need them, okay? They are always inside your code, running on your code. There are quite a few interesting differential factors. For instance, the sharing path, when they are not in use, the probes are always there, but they don't take any time if you don't enable them, okay? And they are safe to use in production. You can even debug the live uh, operating system in production with the machine actually busy, okay? And it's available for quite a few operating systems, not Linux, well, kind of something to talk about later. The native uh, versions are for Solaris and derivatives like uh, Illumos, Open Indiana, uh, mm, S, uh, Smart OS, and so on, the BSD family, and Mac OS. Okay? So you have a Mac, you have D-Trace. What does D-Trace look like? Well, this is my system, my server. I'm listing how many proofs I have in my system now this number, almost 300,000 probes I can connect to, to analyze how this thing is working, okay? That's quite a few probes. They can fire, uh, there are different providers, okay? Providers for system call, providers for I.O., for virtual, virtual memory, for the scheduler, for devices, for everything. Even the program, the, the processes can create local probes, local to those processes, to provide uh, information. Um, what information. See what else? Well, different probes. That's one. How do you use the trace? The trace, you have two components. You have the probes and you have the language. The probes are always there, covering all the system, including the operating system and the drivers, okay? And then you have a language, and not uh, Turing complete language, it's a very limited language, to activate the, probe, the probes and to do some kind of processing when the probes fires, okay? like counting, checking the time, checking the process ID that's running, and so on. That language is very simple to understand. It's called D-Trace, but the language is called D, has no relationship with the D language, so another different language. And I'm going to show a few examples of one line um, debugging techniques. Okay? Yeah. <sighs> 
the first line is showing how many syscall I can trace, quite a few. This is counting twice. This is counting the entry point to the syscall and the retard, okay? When you go inside the kernel, and when you come back. So you actually have half, half of this, okay? And I'm going to show you here a particular example of, I'm going to plug in, into the sync syscall entry. When a program goes to the kernel asking for a, a sync to the disk and print the name of the process. And this is a, an, example, an example execution, okay? Every time any program in the system is calling sync, I get a print line. I don't have to change any source code. I don't, I don't, I don't need to modify my system anyway. I just run this and I get a listing of all the programs doing an F sync. Okay. Live. But that's not interesting. I am interested in knowing how long it's taking this call. Okay. And there's a, another example. Okay. <clears throat> I am plugging, activating this, uh, this proof, the entry, point, the entry um, proof. Okay. Saving the timestamp. The timestamp is the timestamp of the system at that time. I keep it in, in a local variable. And when the call returns, I summarize the difference. Okay? So I know how long it's going to take, how long it takes that, that call. And then I print the histogram. These are nanoseconds. Okay? Most calls are very fast with a, a few outlier, out, outliers from time to time. This is so fast because this is running in a SSD disk, okay? a memory disk, so it's quite fast most of the time. Okay? I don't have to touch any source code. This is running live in a system. Okay? I can plug to a particular process and study the behavior of that particular process. In this case, this is an Apache web server, this, this process ID. I am plugging inside this process ID. Okay? The entry point of all functions of that uh, demo, quite a few, 20,000 probes that I can plug to. Okay? I can even analyze a particular uh, library. In this case, is I am analyzing this uh, Apache process, but only the SSL library. Okay? I can monitor quite a few uh, functions. And I here I'm plugging to a particular function, and I, 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 I am asking uh, Dtrace to show me the calls to this particular function of a running Apache process. And every time the process goes through that function, I get the profile. Okay. With no source code modification, neither change in the behavior of the process. This is an example of a dynamic, dynamic, uh, dynamic uh, probe, a probe that doesn't exist until you create it. This is running 1,000 times per second. I ask the trace to create a, a, a probe running this many times per second, okay? A thousand. When it runs, it checks. This is conditional execution. This check if the current process is this, and it is it's, it's going to show me the stack of the process. I can collect this to, for instance, create a flame graph of um, a profiler, okay? what routines are taking most of the time for this process. Again, without touching the running process. This is a demo already working, already in production. Okay? This example is, is long, but this is easy to understand. I'm just uh, trying to know how much CPU a, part a particular process is taking. I launch uh, a proof a thousand times per second. If the process running at that time, I count it. 
And, it, and always I count the total CPU cycles. And I have the result here after a minute. More or less, this process is taking more or less 12% of the CPU because this process, this example, is a, a CPU bound process taking over an entire core and this machine has eight cores. So it's 12%. If you do the, the division, you, you get 12%, okay? As expected. All of this is very interesting, but what's the relationship with Python? The problem with an interpreter language is that when you show the trace of, the, of a Python program, you don't see the trace of a Python program. You see the trace of the interpreter. The, um, the C code that is implementing the language, okay? That's not useful for a Python programmer. So a few years ago, I make a, a patch for the official Python uh, interpreter to add probes uh, to the interpreter to help a Python programmer to get information from the real Python program running, not the interpreter, okay? And the, those are the probes. You have the function entry and return. These probes are called every time you call a function or a method. Garbage collection start and, and finish to monitor garbage collection and the creation of uh, objects, okay? And every time, you change, a, you change line in your source code. When it's a trace. Okay. With that, with that uh, probes, you can, well, this is the probes, you can have this. This is an example of, I want to know the trace of the color of this particular function. Okay? So I'm monitoring this Python process I'm interested in the fun function entry for this uh, library, the standard lib, lib, and for this function, and show me the stack. And when the process called that function, I can see the stack. From request, this is the request library, okay? From request, you get the stack. So you can understand how that function is used and by whom, okay? Only, one, uh, only with a single line of, well, a long line, but easy to understand. <clears throat> Another interesting topic is uh, what about garbage collection? When Python do does garbage collection, but you don't have you don't have access to the details. You don't know when it's running. You don't know for how long it's running or how frequently it's running. But you can, do, you, can, you can know using these providers, the provider of a start and down garbage collection. In this particular case, I am just calculating how long takes a garbage collection. Okay? This is incorrect. This is not microseconds, but nanoseconds. This is nanoseconds. So it's around 8 milliseconds, a, a microsecond, 3 microseconds. All of this without touching the source code. And moreover, this is something you cannot easily know about your, program, uh, your Python program. You don't have access from Python, you don't have access to this kind of information, okay? So you can, you can, un, you can understand the behavior of your program, you can check how often it fires, and what function, for instance, is creating the most garbage collection invocation, okay? Something that usually in a regular Python program you don't have access to. <clears throat> this is a memory leak uh, detector. Here I'm just counting how many instances of a particular class are created. And when it's delete, deleted, I just uh, subtract one, okay? So I basically, what I have here is a counter for every class in your program, a counter of how many 
instances of that particular class are alive. After a while, you stop the program, the, the D-trace, and it's going to show you uh, a summary, summary of the state of your program. It's going, to show, it's going to show you all the classes you have and how many references you, you keep. In this particular case, that was running for a couple of minutes, and in this particular case, there are two classes here created, probably just regular working. If you have several, so you, so you, if you have a, a, an increased number here, then you have a leak. And you could have, for instance, you could, using the, the stack uh, provider, you could know where the objects are created. The objects you are leaking, where in what particular Python line they are created. Okay? Something that in regular Python you cannot have. You cannot know. Oh, more. This is a whiskey process in production. Whiskey is a protocol to connect a, a Python uh, server to the web, like, for instance, Django. Okay? Uh, most uh, Whiskey is a, is a module for the Apache process to be able to um, publish a Whiskey framework. Okay? In this particular case, I am I want to know the sequences of call that happens when I make a request. So when, when I ent enter the application, I set a flag, one. When I exit the application, the retard, I, I delay the flag. And when I have the flag and I am enter, uh, uh, going into a function, I just print it, okay? So this line is going to print all the calls between entering the application and exiting the application. One line, and you know how your application is behaving for every connection. Okay. <coughs> a problem I had once was I have a lot of threads and they were being block from time to time, and you don't know why. Why they are blocked. They are deadlocked or they are waiting for something. Well, you have a provider, the scheduler sleep. This provider is called when your thread is going to sleep, when your thread is going to sleep because it's waiting for something to happen, okay? So in this particular line, I activating this proof for this process only is going to show me the thread ID and the stack of that, uh, of that thread, particular thread. And I have here an example. I like, I'm launching a, a future, future, future uh, concurrent uh, thread and it's waiting in the queue, waiting for more work to come. Okay? This is something, again, something that in regular Python you don't have access to. And here is a single line of code. <clears throat> Another problem I had once was my problem was fast, except when from time to time was being slow because it was hitting the hard, the hard disk instead of reading memory, from memory, from catch memory. Okay? So we have this amazing provider, I.O. This provider is going to fire when your program is demanding something from the disk. You know that when you, when you do a read call, a system call, if you are lucky, most of the time, the call can be resolved with catch uh, information, information you already have in memory. Okay? You are not actually hitting the disk. But when you are hitting the disk, you want to know, and you have this provider that tells you. And this provider is activating this probe for this process, show me what line of code is firing that probe. In this particular case, the, the interesting line is this. Here I, here I am opening any file in the operating system and reading it. The first time I do it, I get this, because it's actually reading from the disk. 
But the next time you are doing the same line, it's not going to fire because it's already in, in memory. Okay? So with this simple line, you know what files are you actually touching, what files are actually being slow. Okay. All of this without touching the original Python program can be a program you don't have the source, can be a program you don't, it's not yours. You don't need any collaboration from the program, okay? The program can help you. I'm going to show a, a couple of examples in the next uh, slide, but you don't need to. The, the daemon is working in production. You don't, you don't need to stop the program, change something, and launch it again. The daemon is actually running all the time. You just activate the probe you need for a few seconds, get a result, stop the probing, analyze the results, elaborate how to keep investigating what the issues you have, write a new detrace script, launch it again, and so on, until you find the answer you, you need. And the daemon, the daemon process, keep working. It's not aware of the monitoring, it's not the, the performance impact is something you cannot measure. And, and the interesting, another interesting an advantage of this system is that you have visibility of all your operating system at the same time. You are monitoring at the same time the Python program and the, and the operating system. Okay? You know what is happening in all your computers. You're not tracing just a program, you are tracing the entire operating system. Okay. I told before that you don't need the collaboration of the, the Python program, and you don't. But if the program helps you, you can get more information, more easily. Okay? And there is this other project, this is not mine, I am not connected to it. It's the, the Python USD, because this is the meaning, okay? Static defined tracing. The, this is, uh, these are prob probes uh, that the programmer uh, write into the, the original program to help you to debug, okay? An interesting example is this, the FBT, uh, FBT is a function boundary tracer, okay? So you can monitor a particular function when you are interested. In this particular example, importing, importing, and this, uh, this, trivial, uh, this trivial example is decorated with this, so it's going to publish a new proof for this program and for this function. Pay attention to this. Uh, here I get the process ID, and here I call in the function. And in another window, at the same time, I, a, I am asking here for the probes I have. I have two probes, the probes I just created, okay? I am calling the function, and I get here, I have the entry and the return, okay? So if the, if the program helps you, you can get far more information. You don't need it, but the collaboration is helpful. Okay, about the future. Two minutes, yes, I need the <laughs> reminder. The future. This is production ready already for a, quite a few years. It's working in Python 2 and Python 3. Uh, but more, more work is needed. I do most of my work on Solaris and Solaris family uh, operating systems, but the trace works in macOS and the BSD family, okay? And I need somebody to take care of that. So tomorrow we have a, we are supposed to have a, a sprint to try to get this thing working on macOS and, and free BSD. So you can join, you are interested, okay? And I want to add more proofs for more interesting areas of the, of the interpreter that you don't usually have visibility into, like the yield, the 
global interpreter lock and the synchronization uh, primitives in the threading module. And this is something to ask if you want to embarrass me. You can ask this. And this is the sample of the performance. This is uh, the real assembler code that is running when you have a, a D-trace in your program, okay? D-trace pro, pros. Here is when it's not enabled, and here is you enable. When it's not enabled, you have this one, two, three, four uh, instruction with taking no time to execute. So this is a proof that the, um, the performance hit when you are not using the trace, the trace is there, but you are not using it at this moment, the, the performance impact is very, 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 very tiny. Okay? This is tomorrow, tomorrow sprint. This is documentation. And this is something I used to do when, when I have a presentation. I suggest uh, questions, but it's not going to work in this environment, probably. All of these are real questions, difficult to answer, <laughs> but interesting. And that's all. OK, so now for the question part. Are there any Python libs that build on top of D-Trace at all to provide high-level view of a running app with collected stats, CPU time, slow FNC, etc.? cetera? GUI? Uh, uh, there are a lot of tools that are not related to Python. That is, um, when you are interested in these things in, in CPU time, for instance, that's a problem to solve to any kind of programs. And D-Trace is not connected to Python, okay? So any script already made to monitor the CPU use of a program is going to work with Python too. But the tools are not in Python, okay? Okay, the next one. Uh, the D-Trace commands looks quite complex in one line. Is there a way to make it more readable, understandable? Yeah, of course. Uh, I am writing the one line, very long line. <laughs> But you can actually um, use several lines. You can write it in a file and execute the file. Okay? In fact, there are quite complex D trace scripts around. It can be pages long. So yes, it's easy to, to write in, the, in a more legible way. Yeah. OK. Uh, next question from Pavel. Is there any way to use D-Trace on Linux? Just here, that question is here. Okay, okay this, the thing is this. D-Trace uh, is open source, but is, uh, it's not popular, okay? It's not in, in Linux there are two choices, basically. You can use Oracle Linux. Oracle Linux has a first uh, class uh, support for D-Trace, but well, Oracle is uh, Oracle. <laughs> I, let's say you are, you are recording the talk, so let's say it's painful, okay? Painful to use. And there is another project for, uh, I have a guy um, porting uh, D-Trace as a, as a kernel module, okay? I never use it. I not. I don't use uh, Linux, but uh, it's supposed to work. There is a there is a link here. Here, okay. It is on Linux. Next. Okay. Uh, so two last questions because we don't have more time. Can I detrace segmentation faults? Uh, no. D-Trace is safe. Well, well, I don't know in, in Linux. I don't know, <laughs> but in the real operating system. <laughs> there are real operating systems out there. It's safe to use. Uh, Solaris team used this to improve the operating system. So it's even, even, even it's safe even to an operating system level debugging. 
In fact, the Vitrace language uh, has only read uh, abilities, cannot write except if you activate a, a dangerous flag. That dangerous flag allows you to kill processes, stop a process, modify memory. But that's something you have to enable in the command line. By default, you cannot touch memory. You can only read. OK, so the last question from Martin. When should we use D-Trace when developing Python applications? What are the ideal use cases for using it? The ideal use case, in my opinion, is when you are uh, finding problems you don't know how to debug or you don't, you don't know how to analyze. D-Trace is amazing because you, you, you run it on a already running process in, in production. Um, it's very iterative. Usually you, you have, an, you have a, an idea of what's going wrong in your program. You create a single line script to validate that hypothesis or hypothesis. And when the results, you refine the debugging. And you explore the, the behavior of your program with the program in production. So I think you, you don't usually use the trace when you are developing the program. You use the trace when the program is already in production and you, you find that things are not going the way you expect. Uh, okay, so that will be all for uh, today because we are uh, out of time. Mm, so now the break and then the next talk. So thank, thank you for you. the talk.